so welcome to this episode of comic book writing 101 this is part four that we are on right now and hopefully over this past week you had took out the time to work on your story build your character build your five w's and gather all of that pertinent information that you can pull from in your story later on so today what we're going to do is we're going to take that information now and we're going to use it to formulate something called a plot. Now, plot in the most basic sense is the elements that your story are built upon. So it's not about the intricacies of your character. It's not about the aesthetic of your writing. Instead, the plot is what makes your story flow like a coherent story. It is the foundation of what your story is built on. Uh, a way I like to explain the plot is like a skeleton in a human being. Imagine yourself, your body with all its parts without having a skeleton. What are you? You're a big mess on the floor. You're, you're a blob of just stuff and you can't make out the face from the head, the head from the, the legs. So, Without a plot, your story will end up the same. So you start off with the basic elements of your story, which are simply the beginning, the middle, and the end to keep it extremely simple. Then you add a little meat onto the bones. You start adding on your character. You start adding on your dialogue. You start adding on your, your descriptions. And then when it's all said and done, you have a full story that is recognized as what it is. So that is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to go deeper into plot and figure out how we can create a plot for our stories that we have going right now. So for the today's example, we're going to look at the movie Shrek because it's a very good example of plot. It's very clear in this movie. So if you haven't seen Shrek before, Shrek follows an ogre by the name of Shrek. And it gives us the plot laid out very simply, very easily. So Shrek now is an ogre who lives in a swamp alone. Uh, he doesn't like anybody. He doesn't want anyone around. The only thing that Shrek wants is to be left alone, to live on a swamp, because everybody that sees him is scared of him, and they think that he's a big, ugly ogre. So he chose to live alone. Now, this is the beginning of your story. This is what we call the setup. The setup now is where we learn about the character. This is where we learn who this character is. We learn what they're about. We learn what they hate. We learn what they want. We learn how they live. We learn every single thing about the character in this beginning portion of the story. Now, it's very important that your story has a setup. So in the beginning of your story, no matter what kind of story you're writing, you have to set it up for the reader, the viewer, the watcher. They have to know, okay, this is an ogre. He's obviously angry. He obviously doesn't like anybody. Okay, he, he, he has a bad attitude and a bad view on the world. These are things that you need to show your reader in a comic book. Very important because this is what, builds an emotional connection to that character because there these are attributes that we all feel it all doesn't matter nobody here watching this is an ogre but the feelings that shrek have has are things that we feel all the time so that way we have an emotional connection to him because we can empathize with him we've all felt like we want to be left alone before we've all felt like everybody is just on some mess we've all felt these things before so it's easy to make the viewer feel these things if you're using these type of elements so the beginning is the setup you set up everything about your character this is very important today so we're going through the normal day to day with the character this is the normal uh day we're catching him in his norm we're catching him in everything that he does on any other day there's nothing different but it's new to us because we've never met this character before now as we move on we move on to an exciting incident 
Now, an inciting incident in a story is where the protagonist's normal day gets shaken up in a way that he did not, he or she did not expect. This is where the story gets interesting. So now Shrek, a guy, this actually, this picture is from Shrek too, but it gets the same idea. Shrek, the guy who doesn't like anybody, who wants to be left alone, who wants to just live on this swamp by himself, finds that there's fairies and, and, and fairy tale creatures all over his swamp. Now, for a guy who wants to be left alone in this swamp, he hates it. So, you know, he says to the people, get out of here. I don't want you here. This is my swamp. Leave me alone. They say, hey, it's Lord Farquaad. He's crazy. He's a madman. Blah, blah, blah. So so now this forces Shrek into a new situation. So we take the protagonist from the beginning where we learn this is their everyday life to a point where it's like, uh oh, things are getting shaken up. Things changed. And now I have to do something about this. It causes the protagonist to take action. Also, this incident has to result in a ready, visible goal, meaning that the protagonist has a goal to reach by the end of the story. He's on pursuit of accomplishing this goal. Shrek, he is on pursuit of accomplishing the goal of getting his swamp back. That's all that he wants. He That is the only goal that he is setting out to accomplish. And that's very important. And the same thing should happen in your story as well. So all these fairy tale street creatures are on this swamp. So what does Shrek do? He goes and he goes to the source. He goes to Lord Farquaad. He says, listen, man, there's a bunch of fairy tale creatures on my swamp and I just want them off. So Farquaad confirms now what Shrek is always feeling. When, when he sees Shrek, what does he say? Oh, look, it's an ugly ogre. Uh, kill him at once. So Shrek actually handles all of his guards. And it gives Farquaad an idea. He says, you know what? You're noble. I got a task for you. If you can go and rescue this princess Fiona, then you'll get your swamp back. So this this launches Shrek into what I like to call the middle or act two, where now he has a plan. He is out to fulfill this goal. And we watch the character as they try to accomplish this goal. And it is the obstacles now in this part of the story that make it interesting. So if you've seen Shrek, if you haven't seen Shrek, you should probably watch it. And this is usually the longest part of the story. This is where the 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 the, the character's trying to go from A to B, and then every step of the way, something gets in his way to stop him. And this is what builds up incitement. This is what uh, has your your reader rooting for that character because it's like, oh man, I want to see if he's gonna survive this dragon. I want to see if he's going to be able to coexist with Fiona with his attitude as he tries to bring her back. So it's this is what makes it interesting in the story. So now we're gonna look a little bit into our story and see what we can do to build out a basic plot to figure out what our story will be about. Okay, so here we have it. So I have my book here, Otaku, and it's about Jade, a 17-year-old girl, an African-American. Uh, she goes to Uptown High. She's an outcast nerd. She lives with her mom and dad. She has a best friend named Jewel, Jules, Julia. A technology research experiment goes wrong and emerges the anime world with uh, reality and with the knowledge of anime she's left up to jade to save the day a uh, person has access to the powers of the last anime character they watched so this is in modern times it's in new york city it's why so the big why is that an anime villain has got gained access to the physical world and this is just the core still rough elements of our story but now we're going to go ahead and we're going to build on this stuff okay let's get into the plot let's develop a plot for this story 
And it doesn't have to be perfect at first. Nothing has to be perfect at first. We mold these things. We create these things. So plot, what would be, where would this story begin? We're going to have to have the beginning or the setup where we meet Jade. So I think that we'll meet Jade on a school trip. So on a school trip, basic stuff. We're going to do this very basic. Jade wanders off from her class and does what she checks out a new vr vr display okay so she checks out a new vr display uh the display malfunctions as she uses it to watch some of her favorite anime. Okay, so what happens at this point? Then a portal to the anime world opens and out of it emerges the main villain from her show. So setting up, so this is rough, but just looking at what I wrote here so far. So on a school trip, during the school trip, of course, some things that I didn't put here yet were the intricacies. So maybe on the school trip, there's a group of bullies that tease her about being a, a a, a nerd or dweeb maybe on i show her on the bus watching the anime that she will continue to watch on the vr display maybe i show her walking to the bus i will set everything up as i go but these are just rough points that i will definitely or more likely make in the story so the the main villain emerges from the technology glitch and now he's in the real world so the villain, what does he want to do? Let's go typical. The villain wants wants uh to wipe the humans from earth. Very typical, very cliche. Uh how can he do that? in a way that's different let's say he he can he can do this he's able to do this by doing what uh let's say absorbing the souls of what of maybe leaders in society uh so that will be from like sports i'm just spitballing here to political offices so like i'm talking from lebron james to the president of the united states he's trying to absorb their spirits to be able to wipe humans off the earth maybe their spirits give him the knowledge or they that they, they help power him or whatever the case so there's so many there's so many leaders in so many dis different disciplines in the world that he sends uh he sends out his henchmen as soldiers to soldiers to capture the spirit energy of let me fix this spirit energy of 
all of the leaders around the world. Okay. So that is the goal of the antagonist. Now he finds out that his first target is right in front of him. And guess who that is? It's Jade. Why? Because she has extensive knowledge of his world and he needs to take her out. So now we bring our, our main character into play. So he needs to take her out, but but what? Unexpectedly, she counters the killing blow with an energy blast. So she she comes out of nowhere with an energy blast. And she's like, what is going on? I actually used the energy blast. How could I do that? So she now is thrust into a new situation where she's like, I can use anime powers, but she's just finding this out. So, uh, so after being overpowered by the villain, She's, she's, what? She's saved by what? Uh, the main character of the anime. Okay, so the main character of the anime emerges as well, and he saves her. And keeping it short and sweet and simple and rough, they. Defeat the main villain and he escapes. So leave that open ended and they set off to stop the henchmen from completing their task. Of getting all the, pe the the leaders of the world and everything and absorbing their spirit energy. So this is just a very very rough plot, and I will definitely end up going back over this two times, five times, ten times until I get the idea that turns out to be something that I really really like. But just to get something down on paper. We're not even writing a script yet. We're just getting stuff down on paper. And we're going to pull from this over and over and revise and rework and and re and rewrite and rewrite and edit and edit and edit and edit until we get something that we feel is a coherent story that tells a great story uh, that could follow a theme. And then we could take that and put it, the specifics of it into script format so i hope that you all got some valuable information uh hopefully me writing this out for you showed you that you can just think of something off the top of your head and create a great story don't think that you have to create the story right then and there you can have an idea but always revise always rework and get this the plot at least the idea the big plot ideas down on paper and then revise and rework them from there so with that said i hope that i was able to give you some type of value valuable information today i hope that you enjoyed this session and i will see you in the next one if you did get value from this please 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 don't forget to subscribe and to hit the like button and turn on your post notifications so you can know about the next time that i post 
our next session. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and doing some writing with me today. Uh, and I will see you at the next session of Comic Book Writing 101.